Taurus, Taurus. If you run into some money this month, spend it wisely. These fortunes just aren't geeky enough for me. That's more like it. Hi, I'm Carrie Ann. These are the Geek Girl Diaries. Let's make a box of geek. In this tutorial I will show you how you can make your very own printing box and there are a number of items you're going to need. First of all you'll need a Raspberry Pi, a power supply for your Raspberry Pi and also keyboard, mouse, monitor and so on so that you can program your Raspberry Pi. You will also need a thermal printer. They cost about £40 and I bought mine on the internet. You'll need a power supply for this and the cables that attach to it. You'll also need a printer paper roll to put into it. A cardboard box is essential. I used a washing powder tablet box for mine. To trigger your box to print, you will need a button. I got mine from an electrical store for a couple of quid and you'll need some cables to be able to plug that into the Raspberry Pi and into the breadboard. Speaking of which, you are going to need a breadboard and a resistor to be able to connect your button to your Raspberry Pi. So here's a resistor so you know what one looks like. Finally, you'll need a solderless DC connector, which again you can get from an electrical store. All the items that you'll need for this tutorial, I will put in the list in the description so you know where you can get them from. There are a few tools you're going to need. You're going to need a small crosshead screwdriver, some scissors, a cable stripper, a pen, and for really fiddly bits, I would definitely recommend having an adult on standby. Let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is prepare the thermal printer. We need to plug in the cables that came with it. There are two cables. Firstly, there is one that will transmit the data from the Raspberry Pi to the printer. And there is also a power cable. I'm using some male to female cables to prepare this cable to be plugged into the Raspberry Pi. And you can simply just slot them into the holes. And you'll see why this is important later on. Next up, we need to connect our thermal printer to a power supply. So the first thing to do is to cut the end off the power cable and to strip the red and black cables using a cable stripper. Taking your solderless DC power connector, take your red cable and make sure you put it into the positive slot and screw it in nice and tight using your crosshead screwdriver. Then take your black cable, your ground, put it into the negative and you're going to screw that one in nice and tight as well. It's a good idea, once you've done this, to plug in your power supply to the DC connector to test it to make sure your printer is working. And what should happen is a green light on it should flash to indicate that it's working. And if you press and hold the till button, the paper will come out of the thermal printer. Once you know that your printer is working, you can plug it into your Raspberry Pi. So here's my Raspberry Pi and here are the GPIO pins in which we're going to plug it into. So we're going to take the yellow and the black cables I put in earlier and we're going to plug them into the board. It's important to note you can't just plug these in anywhere. You need to connect the output of the Raspberry Pi, the serial TX, to the input of the printer serial RX. And you also need to plug the ground in. There are lots of labelled diagrams for the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi on the internet, and I will include one in my blog post when I type up this tutorial. Now we've prepared our printer, we need to turn our attention to programming the Raspberry Pi. So we need to first of all set up the serial port on the Raspberry Pi. Using a terminal window, first thing I'm going to do is use the apt-get command to install Python Serial. Using the same command we need to install Python Image in TK as well. We have a serial port on the Raspberry Pi, but by default it's already doing something, so we need to change it so that it will work for us and it will use our thermal printer. So first of all we need to give it some permissions, and then we need to navigate to this text file, and we need to delete some code that's written in that text file, so that it just reads what's on the screen now. So on this very long line I'm going to delete everything from the root at the end, down to console 
and I'm going to replace it with this line. Then I can save that and I'm going to restart the pie. Once my pie has restarted, I just need to delete one line from this file. So you just need to navigate to that file and we're going to delete the last line. So we've set up the serial port and our Raspberry Pi. Now what we want to do is we want to get our printer actually printing. So we're going to use the Python thermal printer library that already exists. And to do this, we're going to go onto the internet and we're going to have a look at GitHub. There is already some code on GitHub and we can use this code and we can download it straight to our Pi. But first of all, we need to set up our Raspberry Pi so it's able to do that. So we need to apt get install git core so that we are able to pull directly from GitHub onto our Raspberry Pi. We are going to use a repository on GitHub that someone else has already created. You should be able to search for this. If not, I will put some links in the description below this video. On your Raspberry Pi, it's a good idea to create a directory to um, put all of your downloaded Git files into. Then we can download the Python files that we need. I like to check that all my files are there and then I'm gonna change directory so that I'm in the directory where my Python file is for my thermal printer. And again, we're going to have to adapt this piece of code very slightly. We need to put in this information at the top and we need to make sure it's using the right serial port. So two things. Firstly, at the top, making sure it's going to be able to read the Python file by typing in this code. And secondly, I need to make sure it's using the right port. And it is. This is the exciting bit. We've now got to the point where we can test our printer by executing the Python printer file. We need to make sure we give it some permission so it's able to do that. Then we just execute the printer.py file. And this is what should happen. Hopefully you didn't get too lost in that tutorial. Now we've got the box printing, the next thing to do is to customise what it's printing, to get it to print something we actually want it to print. That'll be in the next tutorial, so don't forget to check out part two. I'm Carrie Ann, you've been watching the Geek Girl Diaries, don't forget to like, share, subscribe!